You don't need to hide your mayo. You don't need to hide your cousins. If there was ever a more uh, Can you imagine incriminatory... It, about it, you like, hide your kids, hide your mayo. What? Where'd my mayo go? <laughs> God damn it. Cousin, no, it... get up. And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly. The show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. This week, Steam's new shader hotness, that compiler, it has went turbo, it has done amazing things for near automatic tomato, but only for AMD cards and Ion Maiden, that game that had to change its name. Well, we didn't know it had to change its name, but it ended up, you know, having to change its name. Anyway, updates on that, including a price bomb. Ride the death machines, clear all the fields, but just don't forget to re-enable your mods. And RPCS3 has a new update. Soon there'll be more working games than not. Spoon. Steam gives us some sliders. Not the 90s TV show, unfortunately, unpopular opinion. And RetroArch is coming to Steam, but not for Linux. At first, anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm Old Man Van, joined every week by our team, Canadian podcaster. That is one Jordan Sfang up there lifting everything in the known universe. And down there, that is Pedro Mateus in Britannia, hey. the man on the island hiding out with you live, joining us, helping us form Cocaine Voltron. At this point, fuck it, YouTube. You're just not going to monetize anything we do. We don't <laughs> care anymore. Hi, Patreons. You're awesome. Uh, before we get going, we'd like to see what's going on in each other's life organs. See if anything new and exciting has happened. And Jordan, you wrote something down. I did. I, I, I have a funny story. I was, I was at the, the gym yesterday doing some deadlifts. Just trying to trying to do sets of eight. Trying to go, see how heavy I could go. And I, I did the what I thought was going to be my last set at like... Uh, 475 by 5 and I'm like I wonder if I can just or spite I, I thought to myself I wonder if I could actually crank that up to like 500 pounds and do it eight times turns out I can't it cost me a callus Ooh. and on that last and on that last one on that last one I felt something I felt something move and then I felt my butt cheeks clench I'm like oh oh no something something's coming I, I think I, th <laughs> I think I, I barely have some containment Oh man! And 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 so oh, no. I, I finish my set and I run to the washroom. Oh. I, I I do the safety wipe. Nothing. I'm like so. It turns out, it turns out yes, I can deadlift 500 pounds a bunch of times without <laughs> pooping my pants. Dude, I feel like a real winner, guys. Dude, <laughs> what you're gonna have to do is buy which I okay. This is side jack here. They make sexy adult diapers, but only for women, not for guys. I was, sexy, sexy adult diapers. I, this was how they're marketed. I was walking through because I had to get some Q-tips, and I was like, "Oh, look, they make like shapely adult diapers." It's like we're the ones for the guys. All the ones for the guys are just like big baby diapers. And I was like, "Well, maybe what are, that's the thing." So, okay, okay. So, so describe sexy adult diapers to me because I'm I'm unclear on. Are they like thongs? But how how does it get the poop collection if it goes up your butt? Right? Does it just plug it? You've applied more thought to this than I have. So, okay. Just it. <laughs> Pe Pe Pedro, ex explain sexy diapers to me. They have a pouch. Yes. <laughs> pouch diapers. Now, see, over here, sexy diapers are shaped like Ryzen 3000 processors, and Amazon doesn't fucking dispatch them. Come on, Amazon. Pedro, I want to give you Pedro, money. T tell the people how you really feel, man. Don't. don't I'm tired of you holding this. It's going to kill you. <laughs> How tell, I really tell, feel tell me is, how three days ago, I put in an order on Amazon. It's like, okay, give me the 3700X. I want the 3700X. And um, they said, yeah, okay, you may get it uh, somewhere between the 19th and the 21st. It's like, but why, though? <laughs> just give me. Because God's real. He just doesn't like you. That's why. Deal with it. Um Eh, fair enough. <laughs> High flag spaghetti monster. I think you're awesome. Um, man, I uh, made a video yesterday. If you saw it, that was kind of a breakneck thing. I got like a kind of decent preamp for 60 bucks. I was like, yay, that's neat. Oh, let's replace the tube. The internet says replace the tube. That was a ginormous pain in the ass. I thought I was going to break it. And the terrible thing about electronics, when you start digging into them with the knowledge of like, if I break this, you know you can fix it. Therefore, you have to fix it. So you actively avoid trying to do that, which it didn't break. Um, using it right now, if you managed to ride the nightmare train all the way until the end last week, you saw our Behringer um, Ultra gain just go. Yep. Yeah, that happened. Oh, so oh, so that's what that was. Okay. Yeah, that's what what the mystery is solved. We kept it from you for an entire week. <laughs> oh. You know what? I even told the horse. Listen, the, 
Listen, man, I'm I'm glad that you're actually starting to communicate with the horse right now because it's been coming to me with a bunch of these problems. I really just can't fucking deal with it. It's the steam. <laughs> so, uh, Valve has a new thing, no, they and don't. no, uh, they haven't really, you know, changed anything much. They just introduced yet another bit of automation. This one is, uh, well, it lets you figure out which games you may want to look at by giving you two sliders. It gives you two sliders and a hidden algorithm that interprets those uh, two sliders with the uh, playtime of games that you have in your library. So if you've played like 357 hours of Skyrim, just going off of my own here, <laughs> and um, however many more hours of Counter-Strike Source and however many more hours of uh, APB Reloaded, uh, it'll go, okay, you probably like these games. It's like, um, are you sure about that, Steam? Because uh, all of those are Windows games, and yes, I know Proton's a thing, but how about an OS filter? Can we get an OS filter on that? That'd be nice. <laughs> See, that that's that's the thing about machine learning, though, is you gotta like train it on data sets so we can figure out, oh, this... Have have the AI identify which ones are the Linux users versus which ones are the Windows heathens. Yeah. Or, or, or at least that's what they want us to believe. I'm reminded of the XKCD comic from earlier this week where it's like, technically, if you do a task by hand, you can say that you trained a neural net to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but, it's, you know, this is something Valve has rightfully been accused again, uh, well, for, for a long time, and trying to automate everything poorly. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. it, it is shit-tastic solution piled on top of each other. For the sole purpose of now to their credit earlier this year like we actually hired some people that do tech support and they're which is good you know getting hold to steam support is a much better experience than it was you know at this time last year but i don't know man i mean my first thought was like having solved all other valve issues and steam issues we <laughs> focused on ai okay why not it must be nice to work at valve that's all i'm going to say You're like what do you want to work on ai fuck it do it um, but yeah, I mean, it does seem like a more advanced version of like the discoverability queue, which yeah, with less interaction. You, well, this this is kind of the and, thing. Who? How so, can you? You would have to train the discoverability queue yourself to sort out the nonsense. But that's the thing. They call it the interactive recommender, and the only interaction that you have are two freaking sliders. Well, I mean, I mean, you in you interact with Steam, and then it collects all the data, Pedro. Clearly, mm -hmm. clearly, you just need to interact more. But this is actually so. This is this is actually the the first thing in what Valve is calling the Steam Labs experiments. Uh, yes, yeah. So uh, that that was part the first, and the the other the other two experiments they've released have to do with uh, trailers. Um, so they they have they have two out. One tries to like get a five second clip of gameplay from like the various trailers that um, people put or in the store page to give you an idea of like what the game actually looks like while you're playing it. Cause God damn it. There are a lot of trailers that give you like concept art and cinematics and don't actually show you what the fuck the game's about. So mm -hmm. I can see mm -hmm. why having something to like pull that Wait out would minute. be useful. Okay. True story. I watched one yesterday and that's all it was. There's, like, the fuck's, there's also like, the ones that you hover over and it goes coming soon coming soon so, and well, so the entertaining soon. thing was like at the end it was like it, it very proudly told you i made this and it pulled the glue stick out <laughs> of its mouth then it put it back in and walked off yeah and so the the, the the other the other experiment they've released is a thing that collates various trailers to make a half hour steam news show and it'll even generate a script for a human to read based on of like the Steam descriptions, which are usually very well written and descriptive. Dude, and dude, all right, Patreon, go. We read, we <laughs> live, live, live read a script. It generates. Oh God! <laughs> you, oh, God. you get to select the characters and the voices. Uh, uh yes. Yeah. Um, but but I mean, like, it, the, the the this sort of reminds me of like what they had on TV for like uh, G four or Electric Playground if you're in uh, Canada. Um, try, trying to get that stuff back, but you know we have we have YouTube now, so I I I, I don't know. They're like, but this is this is an experiment, right? Like something may come out of this that may impact something else. You don't know. It's good to sort of have these sort of playgrounds where you can experiment with these things, but 
again, man. I mean, they, they got to do something with that 40%, you know? Yeah. Well, I, yeah. I, I, I mean, I mean <laughs> what, 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 one, one thing they did was they updated uh, Steam Link for the Raspberry Pi. Hotness. Yep. Yeah, it's uh not or it's not or it's not not. It's version one dot one dot three six. Uh and now you can run Steam Link on a Raspberry Pi four if you manage to grab one of the four gig models. You could probably still get it running on one of the one or two gig models, but who wants those? That's peasant pie. Pie peasants. Um But yeah, um now uh the other thing they did was they added the device form factor for an updated or an upcoming Steamworks API, which, you know, let let's spin the wheel of booga booga, right? Mm-hmm. Um Steam on the Raspberry Pi confirmed? Question mark. Or maybe what one thing that would be really cool is if they added a Steamworks API so that you can use the GPIO on the Pi to make like custom peripherals. That would be pretty. That's neat. definitely one thing. But now, now we're in a very interesting spot, boys and girls, because the Pi Four is in that danger zone of like I can almost use you to do things now. Mm-hmm. Like <laughs> you, you could definitely transcode things. My Steamy Plex box Netflix machine. Hmm? Question mark? Mm-hmm. Emulator? <laughs> yep. And they do say that uh, it can transcode 4K and even present 4K over those micro HDMI ports that it has going on. You know, the really breaky ones. Uh, but <laughs> my achy, breaky two, port, baby. I just don't think you <laughs> understand. You're dead, Jordan. Dead if I, seriously. <laughs> You're welcome. Um... <laughs> So, uh, speaking of things that are coming, well, to really over, uh, retro arching, over arching, I tried to throw you guys to it a minute ago and he was like, no arch. So yeah, uh, retro arch is coming to steam this month, July 30th. That's no more. It's a steam logo. But it's not coming to Linux. That's actually one of the things that they say. They say they want to make sure that they have everything in place to uh, be able to support everyone that wants to give RetroArch uh, a try. Why they wouldn't already try with the thing that basically started them and kept them running all this time? Because, let's face it, it's called RetroArch. As far as I know, Arch is not a uh, Windows distribution. So, I don't know. No, it's an architecture. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there's also the they say that they're not including any of the uh, bits of steam functionality and i remember when empty big kudos to empty for uh giving us this story on chat realm uh when he posted this i'm like oh yeah retro arch with the uh, steam input awesome that means you can basically use whatever controller you want and you don't even have to go through their config. It could just pull that directly from Steam. Mm-hmm. Nope. They're not including any of the Steamworks functionality at all at first. They say they may in the future, but yeah, this whole story is just a big disappointment. Not really, because they're doing it the smart way. If you release something, even if it, you, you label, label it as beta or anything like that, and you're like, well, these other features, they're there and they don't work. You're going to get review bombed because people are going to try the features that you're like, yo, this this probably doesn't work. I'm like, this doesn't work. Nah, negative. <laughs> it's better to roll out what you have that you know is working. Now, I want to, I die. That would be so awesome if we got some type of Steamworks integration and cloud saves. But like multiplayer, the world needs LGC plays Battletoads. Yes, that level. You know the one Does I'm talking it? about. <laughs> But does it though? Yes, we we just have to buy some expendable controllers and like maybe cage the monitors off. And, and right, right. Uh, I was gonna say like buy some rubber pads for the wall so you can like throw mm-hmm. the controllers. Pretty much, yeah. And it won't fucking break anything. Be yeah. Brilliant. Oh, it's good to have face cam. <laughs> Dude, I I I look forward to the forthcoming legal shitstorm from Nintendo when they're like, <laughs> oh, you're selling emulation on Steam. Oh, cease and desist. They don't need to sell it. <laughs> they can just put it up for free. Things are going to happen, man, because they do make a point. They're like, yo, this doesn't have any game. This doesn't run video games. This is uh, for baking. It's it's, yeah, it's right. retro FBI. It's for running modular programs. Homebrew. Ah, that that's the ticket. Homebrew. <laughs> anyway, that's good to see. And I, I, I don't have immediate hatred for it. I, I would rather them roll out something at their own pace and get it out there correctly. I, and we need more open source stuff on Steam. Yeah. Yes. Indeed. 
Okay, check this out. Uh, Valve's latest Linux gaming work is boosting AMD Vulkan frame rates by up to 44%. Big headline, and I swear if you try to play a video, I'll stab you in the dick, Forbes. Um, it's, yeah, oh, it's trying, it's, baby. Look at it. Uh, Dino. Oh, and it jumps back no, up. No, you, 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 you don't want to learn about the richest rappers, Ben? Oh, man, come on. <laughs> make, it, make it rain. <laughs> so this is talking about ACO, you know, their shader compilation, and we talked about this last week. And, you know... It is delivering a just a near automatic tomato, 44% boost. I mean, making it 12% higher than the native Windows performance. Uh, that's kind of impressive. Now, this is just one game. And again, uh, with this particular game, when you bring it up, not terribly surprising because, well, the Windows version runs like absolute junk without the community community created far mod which is like you, which doesn't work under proton unfortunately that's the comparison i'm interested in because no one plays this game under windows vanilla and proton i've tried to play it a little bit i mean i you can play it but you just can't really stream it effectively right now but this is good news and we were talking in the pre-pre super shows and that i'm almost confident you know Within the next year, you know, the next 300 and some change days, we're going to have an instance of a within-year release game running better, more performant under Linux than the native version on Windows. Oh, for sure. Um, ACO is very, very promising. Like I said last week, there's going to be some interesting stuff uh, coming out as a result of this. And I mean, as I mentioned in the pre-pre Superstars, Justin, there's already a lot of cases where Wine will straight up outperform Windows uh, running Windows games. Uh, it's been fairly few and far between. But now that Valve is actively like developing this and is actively testing this against like new games that are coming out. Um, like Ben said, this is, it's, it's start, it's going to start to become a lot more common to start seeing games performing significantly better via wine, via ACO and all this other crap under Linux than on windows. Mm -hmm. And you know, Hey, you don't always need to, your and your system won't get taken down by random windows updates. So, you know, <laughs> and this is a pretty good thing, especially for the AMD drivers, because we may finally finally have that tipping point where an AMD video card performs better under Linux than it does under Windows. Right after I get Pipe this stream. processor to boot. <laughs> um. <laughs> womp womp. Well, the processors do boot. The The problem is with uh, System D. Since so it's not even the, the fault Linux of Linux. Okay, this is a beautiful <laughs> and, thing. And, and, and anyways, we, 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 got, we got some new games. Iron Maiden, and I think we got Iron our, we, it's thing. We got to run for our it. lives, man. Because now hills. it's called Ion Fury. I mean, Fury. Same difference. Um, <laughs> it, they, they had to change the name. We were talking about this a month, two months back. But we do have a release date for it. And this is with, like, the original, like, what was it, build engine? Yeah, the build engine. Yeah, from Same when that runs the Dukes. Blood and Shadow yeah. Warrior. And, from yeah. way back in the day. But they're like, yo, to avoid the legal issues, because... You know, you really couldn't Iron Maiden. We don't know if it was directly them or like their company or whatever, whoever's working for them. Like, oh, no, people will confuse this video game with a band. To which everyone went, fucking what, mate? Uh, but <laughs> they decided that they really couldn't afford a prolonged lawsuit that they may or may not win because, man, that can be some RNG. But there is a price increase starting July 18th. It's going to go up to twenty four ninety nine. Kind of interested in it. I don't know. I think... Maybe I'm a little retroed out, and plus this really just looks like Duke Nukem. Yeah, I mean, because 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 it's E Duke. I mean, <laughs> listen now. Here's the thing, though. Now they're infringing on my all mascot glam rock band Iron Furry, so now <sighs> I gotta sue them. And, <laughs> um, you get a well, shocky it's, stick. It's 2019, right? You have Blood came out a couple of uh, weeks back. Now you have uh, Ion uh, Fury. Uh, so yeah, clearly 2019 is the year of the Duke 3D engine. And so. this is from 3D Realms, man. You know, this is yep. <laughs> like Gary's hipster pixel shock. So mm. no, that is 3D Realms going, oh, wait a second. People hated uh, Duke Nukem forever. How about if we just, you know, remake Duke Nukem, but. Uh, see, you know. see, the, the, this, this, this is the retro shit. Hundred megs of drive space. That's what I'm saying. It'll, yeah, yeah, like, well, that, well, it, it, it's legit. Well, when I see a hipster <laughs> pixel game, and it's like, oh, well, make sure you have nine gigs available. And eat a bag of well, dicks. What, well, I, well, well, yeah. well, well, what was that game that was basically Quake? Um, oh, Slain. Uh, 
Maybe? Not slain. Okay, uh, the other one. Yeah. Uh, yeah we, 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 threw, we, threw, we threw chairs at it. Um, but yeah, like that, that strafe? looked like... Foot, stra uh, no, not strafe. Um, it, 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 was, it was the one with like um, okay, the, the, the giant rat boss. Any, anyway, anyways, like that was oh, two gigs. Um, two gigs. That, yeah. that was two gigs. And this, again, and the, yeah. All right. So. All right, Besiege, it's Legos for sociopaths. <laughs> they got two new levels out. Um, yeah, uh, this is the update not point oh five or eight five rather. A uh, bunch of bug fixes. Um, you can fully rebind base controls now, which is nice. Um, they added uh, tagging and searching of your library because you're gonna build up a bunch of these fucking death machine monstrosities over the course of you playing Besiege. Then maybe you want to save them and reuse them. So now they have a way for way to actually like organize your collection of horrible murder machines. Um, there is, uh, you will need to re-enable, uh, mods after this update because there's some change that will require that. They needed to delist all the mods to make sure that there was no breakage. Um, but yeah. What, all right. It, the, so, okay, what we're viewing, everyone at home listening, is an animated GIF of the change log because fuck you, that's why. Yeah, yeah pretty fo much. Fo fo followed by a link <laughs> to said change log. Yeah, um, I know. It's just the fact that they took the time to make an animated GIF. Up the change law. They made gifts for everything else. They figured, you know what? Let's just make another gift. In Pedro's world, this is normal. T-I-L. And yeah. so, <laughs> b b Besiege, guys, I, I, it's a fun, it's a great game. I fucking love that game. They added multiplayer, and it's even better. But you got to release, man. People nope. stopped giving a shit about Besiege like three years ago. I was about to say, this, this is like the Pepsi challenge for Besiege, because it had its moment, you know, about two two years ago. Like, maybe, yeah. mm -hmm. I mean, it... it Got the internet hotness. Reddit was like, "This is a thing. This is awesome. Let's make horrible things." And I mean, there was it had a big community. That time's gone. I mean, it's been gone. People are like, "Oh, I remember Besiege." Do you think they're gonna? You can ride this out long enough to where you can get the hype coming back and get a release out of it. I don't, I don't, I don't, the eight hundred and twenty-six so. uh, recent reviews that still say it's overwhelmingly positive. They say that yeah, apparently people are still playing this a well, lot. Only out of twenty-five. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, and I, I think I think the people like actively playing it are the people who like who are this is what super into the Lego. Yeah, yeah, it's they're super into the Lego aspect of it, and they just want to like it, it, it's like the Minecraft syndrome, right? There, there's like You're a in straight Minecraft up to underground work on a besiege league we don't even know about, man. <laughs> Dude, they've they've re-implemented Rocket League in Besiege. Mm -hmm. Actually, fuck, I played shit out of that. Oh. Murder ball. There, 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 there's, there's an idea for some DLC uh, besieged guys Rocket League mode. Who needs build, murder build your own when car. you have murder guns? Murder box, burnt murder cube, man. Tamberg has controller support. We threw some chairs at this as well. This is the World War One shooter. Um, and why you'd want to play a gritty Iron Sights FPS with a controller is beyond me, but you can. It's, it's fully available. You, um, they've also updated the multiplayer so that um, there's a dog pile effect where um, if people are joining a game in progress they'll join the team that's winning and then the team that's losing will just get completely fucking steamrolled because they're getting all the new people um now you can if you're uh, joining a game mommy? yeah are you, are you my <laughs> mommy uh now if you're joining a game you'll be encouraged to go to one of the other teams uh i'd rather they actually make getting into a multiplayer a lot game a lot easier because we had pedro you me and like foxy had some fucking problems <laughs> getting or was yeah our third <laughs> There's some fucking problems getting, yeah, getting you that kids up been a minute on that. I watched like <laughs> just from the sideline. I was like, what are they up to? And came back like 30 minutes later and it was still like an attempt were being made. Yep. Good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So may, may, maybe make your multiplayer like lobby system a little more intuitive first, but it's, 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 it's a good change nonetheless, I guess. That's a brew. I don't know, man. The, uh, uh, one of the things that they had in the... It was like the very last item on the bullet points is like, fixed haystack collision near the farmhouse in Prussia. I don't know why, but that was hilarious when I first read it. It's like, why is that a thing that needs fixing? Dude, you, you know how people <laughs> is. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's like, oh it, yeah, it, that haystack, you can collide with it now. When I, I read oh, that, though, but <laughs> as we were just saying, you know, that becomes that game that, like, he... That's a person's game. 
This very, mm -hmm. very much is, th this is like that with a side of like, they will get angry at you if you say anything Verdun, negative about Tenenberg, it. Verdun, Tenenberg, yeah. yeah. They're like, how dare you? You don't understand anything about video games because I get up and I play the, and I'm like, okay, I'm walking out of this room backwards <laughs> and slowly, no sudden movements. <laughs> Well, I mean, the other thing, too, is, like, this This is a game that's specifically targeted at, like, World War One recreationists. Yeah. And so, like, the, yeah, they, they put in effort, like, making sure that, like, all the colors are period appropriate. They even, like, got someone to dig out, like, their fucking great-great-grandfather's World War One uniform Gave from, like, him a shuttle, or a some shit. Like, go get him. All right. Yeah. Owl boy. Anyways. Yeah, well, it's not owl boy, yes, but it, it does have a boy and an owl. Uh, it's uh, Eagle Island. And basically, it's uh, they describe it, it as it a has an falconry, owl, but it's an eagle. It looks like an owl. Seriously, look at that and tell me it's not an owl. <laughs> I think it's a murder bird. Is what murder it is. bird? <laughs> but yeah, they say it's a falconry inspired gameplay and procedurally generated worlds. So it's yeah, it's probably going to be another one of those Metroidvania style things. Very much uh, from what the trailer shows that's, in the face of... Whoa, uh, whoa, that's... All right. You don't make a falconry... In, that motherfucker's never seen a falcon. He didn't Google falcon when they did the pixel look. No, mm. that's a that's an owl. That that was the thing that I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like an owl. <laughs> well, that's... There, there, there are there are other birds too. I, I just I just like that like in, in instead of like a weapon or a boomerang or something, you throw this bird and then it yep. like catches fire and explodes. Hey, look, you it, get it has two a character birds at with one a, point. a helmet and goggles, just like totally not that other game. Yeah, totally. <laughs> hey, it's got a better ice drag. I bet there's more screen oh, time yeah. with the ice dragon than there was in Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah, still, yeah, still a better love story than season eight of Game of right? Thrones. Uh, hey, there is a. In Eagle Island demo. You can download it, play it, give it a shot. Uh, the iron price is $19.99. Uh, it just requires 1804 60 bit, so it should run on all the... Oh, there, there, there's a speed run mode, too, because reasons. It's 2019. <laughs> I mean, and you need an internet connection for that. I'm saying, man, we need to speed run Desert Bus. Into, into, into a wall? Yeah. Maybe. Okay. Loading Red Run, I've been trying to do that for many Clea. years now. <laughs> Clea, Clea, I don't, I don't, I don't know how this is pronounced, but it's available. You can buy it. Um, it is a animu horror game where you run away from creepy people and try to like not get murdered. Um, that's about all I can put together from this. Uh, there's Pretty not much. like a de yeah, there's not really a demo or anything. Something, something tells me that like the Atomic Aster Mirror would be super into this game because. It's it's a lot of just like trying to get to the next door without getting noticed, and there's like creepy anime protagonists, and I don't fuck I don't fucking know, man. It's creepy anime shit. If uh, you're into creepy anime shit, this is your game. Otherwise, no. I don't know. It, I, I, it, hmm. Go 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 it ahead. It seems I, to have the 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 side scroller thing of like your um your van braces and your uh darkest dungeons, but we already make the uh, darkest anime dungeon with van brace. Uh, so I, 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 I don't know, honestly, it, a demo wouldn't have gone to miss on this one. <laughs> uh, yeah, Did, maybe cr this is... cr credits to one of the voice actors being named Xanther. That's, right. uh, that's a name. Uh, pre-release, pre-release. <laughs> I, I don't know. This is uh -uh, not my thing. It's, it doesn't look creepy enough and it looks like some weeb shit. Not that there's anything wrong with it. It's not what I want to play. Oh, it's not. There's a hundred percent stuff wrong with it and that it's weeb shit. All right. Whatever. <laughs> Send, yeah. send, send your hate mail to Pedro. Yeah, Let Pedro. I, I, yeah, because I was totally the one who made that claim. But whatever. Yeah, ex exactly. Uh, Shut up, Godhood. Pedro. Godhood. <laughs> Godhood is what I'm striving for. Not really, but uh, it's also what the these fine folks at Abbey Games are going for, and they put out a game. It's in early access right now, and they call it Godhood. And if you look what at the reviews, it? it says. Godhood. Abby Games, man, uh, it's got like a monk in the logo. Do you think like it would you you would get excommunicated to like if you sent like a bulk order of like Rogaine to a monastery? Probably. <laughs> but let's, uh, let's find out. Patreon goal. I was about to say you want to go in half season, Jordan. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm I'm, I'm, I'm I'm curious. All right. <laughs> but the reviews are mixed, and when it comes to like God Sim games. Your fan base is a very, very fickle mistress, and I read through some of the reviews, it's basically, oh, it's not a god sim, it's a nanny sim. The uh, little folks that you're supposedly their god, uh, 
Well, they don't actually do anything unless you tell them to. It better be goddamn good for 24... 24- 29 early That's access. the thing. It isn't. Mm. The, they don't do anything. You have to do everything, and then you just wait until they're done with whatever you told them to do, and then you rinse so, and repeat. So, so basically, it's the exact opposite of doing anything related to being a god. Pretty much, yeah. You know, I mean, I, I, I was just going to say, it needs more giant monkeys flinging flaming feces, but... That's <laughs> me. Well, I immediately... Down at the bottom, uh, Valve's like, more from Mabby Games. It's like, I know that name. Oh, Renowned Explorers. Eh, Reuse. It's like, that okay, uh, nope, I don't. Renowned Explorers had its moments. I, all right. yeah, I could understand people who like that genre enjoying that game. Yeah. I'm not one of them. And uh, Reuse, or however the fuck you pronounce that game. But I was like, what the fuck's going on in this thing, man? Yeah, I, we, I mean, we threw, we threw chairs <laughs> at that one, so. Again. No, d- no, I think they just sent us a... Uh, uh, Copy. We, I don't know. Uh, w- Something happened. Rius was in one of the bundles we threw chairs at Renowned Explorers. Mm. Yeah, I, I like I said, or like Pedro said, uh, Renowned Explorers was pretty decent. Um, it yeah. just it, it needed more stuff. That was basically it. Yeah. All right. Because you finish it, and it's like, oh yeah, we finished it. Now what? <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyways, coming up next, we have two projects that have very similar names, and they both have releases Yay. with very similar version numbers Again. too. So it's gonna get extra fucking confusing. confusing. Yeah. Over here at Linux Gamecast, we are very professional. Don't believe us? Just catch the live show at some point. But hey, if you'd like to um, fund this professionalism, let me tell you about professionalism. Is- <laughs> I was playing Wolfenstein Friday, and I was in a Nazi diner. Do you want know it was a diner? Checkered floors. And you would know that if you watched the <laughs> live show. You watched last week's Which show. you get oh, access yeah. to as a Patreon. It's crazy. You get all sorts of crazy stuff by going over to patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast and signing up for just like a dollar for a dollar a week. You can help feed Pedro adult diapers. Um, <laughs> sexy, you also get, adult you diapers. Yes. sexy adult diapers. Sexy adult diapers. Feed but you, me adult but you also, diapers. You also get access to, because he's so full of shit as it is, uh, you also get access to uh, stuff like our Discord channel or the show notes so that you can see the shows as they come together. Uh, you can even get access to the extra hour of Linux Gamecast content that we put out exclusively for the Patreons. It's pre pre super shows, and it's pretty fucking mental. I guess we should All say the- that we do that live, too. You can pop in our Discord and we, we, click we, it on. We, we do. Participate. Yeah. You you absolutely can. Scott was doing that before when he was telling us how to set Unity to open up in the windowed mode. Because apparently handy. the streets are rogue devs. Every pre pre super shows that needs a Scott be like Scott. I got a question about the Unity game engine. Bra. Yeah. yeah. Um. What 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 else we got? Uh, T-shirts. If you, if you head on a boom. Yeah. We we store it up. Where my face? Where all our faces? <laughs> yep. Even Frank. It, yeah. May, you know maybe 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 if we unlock the underwear, we can get one with like our face on each butt cheek. I don't know. I am not looking <laughs> to see if Teespring does adult diapers. Nay, Jordan, I'm putting my foot down. I'm putting my foot up. Pedro's adult diaper. Um, anyway, anyways, we also got uh, an Amazon store. If uh, you, you, if you are interested in the, how we put this together, and you, maybe you want to replicate it yourself without any sort of instructions, I totally have uh, that pulled up. There it yeah, is. Yeah, uh, you 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 can you can head on over to that and check it check out and buy what we have, and then you can be a follower. Or if you want to just give us stuff, shower us with presents. Both Pedro and I have a wish list you can get to from uh, LinuxGameCast.com, just under the support menu. Um, we also we also do have a support page if you don't want to give us money through Patreon or you want to want to give us Bitcoin, you Dogecoin, support the Libre show, pay. man. If you want yeah. to support the show, tell a cat, tell your friend, give us a retweet. I mean, we live on that. Or just come, come by and say hi during the live show. That's kind of important. Absolutely, Ab- absolutely yeah. You, cool. If you if you go to our IRC uh, on Freenode, mm-hmm. LGC Weekly, it shows up on our Discord. Get 100% so, free. Uh, interesting business model we have. It's it's kind of the, uh, we just give it away and we're like, hey, man, if you dig it, you know, maybe, maybe kick us a shekel or two. That'd be awesome. So we keep doing it. That money just goes directly back into the show. But even better, if you can't afford there's, to no, give us some shekels, there's nothing but you enjoy the content that. anyway. No, nothing better. Hit the share button. Uh, Seriously. Just hit the share button on whatever social media you happen to uh, hang out in. Okay. And well, well, what if somebody's that on Pornhub and they lot. hit share, then they're not paying attention and it ends up on Facebook and they're like, oh man, I hit a share so, button. So that, 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 that is your mistake <laughs> for not having Pornhub open in incognito mode. That is not logged into all your other shit. Yeah. <laughs> Pro tips. Pro chips. All right. D- Dix Vicks. 
<laughs> yeah, so Dixvix 1.3 is out now. Uh, they have a actually a sizable changelog this time around for the past few ones were just womp, a couple womp. lines. Yeah, this one they have, the discard optimization one was an interesting one specifically because AMD is not supported. Uh, the new uh, extension is VK EXD shader demo to helper invocation, and it's only supported on Intel in Mesa 19.2 Git and the NVIDIA Vulkan beta drivers, the ones we talked about last week. Th that, said, also... that said, though, uh, if you're uh, using ACO, you have access to the previous discard implementation. That is yep. about as good, but you don't get any of the new hotness with the new mm -hmm. Vulkan extension. Yeah, this and is true. They I also like have some uh, buck fixes and improvements, fixes. which is always very nice to see. You got to fix that buck, buck man. Hey, fixes. man, stack fixes are up next. <laughs> I'm going to dig into the Discord optimization stuff, asynchronous presentation, and the busy waiting during presentation thing. That's going to be interesting to like smooth things out. But mm -hmm. as Pedro, not available for AMD cards right now. I'm like, mm -hmm. what? But it's available for <laughs> Intel Quick Sync. It's like, yeah, it doesn't make sense either. When I did see somebody, if you're on NVIDIA, you need at least driver 418, the um, beta drivers. The, 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 new, the new Vulcan drivers. To which I saw yeah. someone yep. online was like, was this going to force me to upgrade to 418? To which I replied, <laughs> yeah. Why? 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 Would Wait, you? What? Uh, yeah. The the the, uh, the busy waiting uh, present uh, during presentation thing is really interesting too because on um, on low CPU power systems uh, it'll actually or it will actually uh, decrease the CPU usage, which is pretty handy. It makes DXVK, again, very, very useful for trying to run newish games on older hardware that may not support it through, like, traditional wine methods mm -hmm. of doing things. Um, yep. And, ho and ho hopefully, too, this will make it into the child project of this, which we're going to talk about. <laughs> Yay! Okay. D9! Uh, <laughs> Hypnotoad commands you. It is D9VK version 9.13. I told you it's confusing. Ribbit, ribbit, <laughs> ribbit, <laughs> motherfuckers. Um, couple croak, croak. Of, yep. So this is allowing uh, you get some Vulcan hotness with the DX9, which is good in theory when it works. I've not had a lot of luck with it, but I wait with bated breath to be able to run like Bayonetta on more than one thread. That is definitely going to be awesome. Hasn't happened yet, but uh, because it still nips with X input. Gang of fixes for this, mostly performance and uh, bug fixes. You know, good old fashioned D three D nine. And you might be thinking to yourself, man, hey, I can run most Direct three D nine games just fine. Some of them you can't, Pedro. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, some no. of them you need a beefier CPU than you currently have if you want to do it the old way. Yeah, and uh, one of the things I noticed about this one is that they also uh, enabled the early discard for the ACO compiler. So, clearly, one of these branches is paying attention to what Valve is doing. Well, Thank cl goodness. clearly <laughs> everything's going to get merged in together into one big happy play button. Yeah. If you I'm just, I'm really hoping that Valve actually goes, okay, so if we give you money, D9VK, will you fix DX input issues, please, now? They're going to be dealing now. with that, and we're going to see DXVK, well, D9VK, Jesus, people, come on. <laughs> Um, D9VK merged it with, D it's going to become one project and wine, the wine project is going to go. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> but well, that's all going to get rolled into Proton eventually in this magical future that I'm personally looking forward to. But if you want to use this with Proton, go to the show notes. All this is going to be available there. I have a very easy example that you can decipher and go, oh, that's how I do that. Because that's not made clear in many places. What irritated me, and I was like, how do I get... The oh, okay, I do that, too, too. Then you, too, can launch something, touch your controller, and go right to the desktop. Yeah, they need to integrate that into Wine Tricks at some point. It's like, Wine Tricks D9VK. There, done. Yeah. Or, or Proton <laughs> Tricks, for that matter. Um, which, I guess, uses Wine Tricks. Anyways, yeah, shut up. Just wine tricks. Shut up, <laughs> hypothetical straw man I'm arguing with. Our PCS3. They have a new... They have, well, they don't have a new release. But periodically, they put out these uh, progress reports just to describe... A little bit what behind. What's actually happening. Yeah, they, they were, they're a little late, because... Their, their, their reports are put together by volunteers. If you want to make sure that these reports come out in a timely manner, you can fucking volunteer. They give you a sign-up form for that. Or you do can they have give a the Patreon? money over Patreon. They do. 
Uh, yeah. it's, it is linked in this article, which is linked to in our show notes. Surprise, surprise. Uh, <laughs> any, anyways, um, nothing crazy going on. Uh, they have some uh, PPU, SPU uh, compiler or surface caching improvements, SPU compiler improvements uh, that make a bunch of games actually playable. Um, mm-hmm. What they're saying is the um, the number of games that are playable is actually getting closer to overtaking the number of games that you can actually just get into. Which is yeah. really good. It, it, it's it's if you more, look more... at the like the chart that they have uh, at the top of the posts, it's like playable. It's the lead number and in game, it's the lead number. So, yeah, that, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, eventually there are going to be more games that are working on RPS RPCS three that aren't, and that's kind of like the tipping point for an emulator. That's when you kind of know that it's the real boy because this thing has made insane progress since we started covering it about two years ago. Mm-hmm. Like. The PlayStation 3 is not a simple piece of hardware by any means. And no. the fact that they have this running to the point where they have games running well is astounding yeah. in, in two years. Mm-hmm. So, and it's, um, there's still one of the games that's still not playable is uh, it gets in game now. Kudos. Very big kudos there, RPCS3, uh, which is um, fuck. Uh, the uh, Ellen Page looking girl with the burly beyond man. beyond two souls. No, the other one. Uh, <laughs> the Last of Us. Last of Us. Thank you. Yes, because El- <laughs> Ellen Page was actually in Beyond Two Souls. <laughs> yes, that was, that was Beyond Two Souls. Uh, that's why I said Ellen Page looking girl. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, the Last of Us because I saw I can't remember who it was play it on YouTube. It's like I want to play that game. I actually want to play that game. So. Yeah, give me. I, I think I've watched too many people play that game. Like, uh, <laughs> all right. Well, and, and you know, and you know, the movie's coming out, so who the fuck knows? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, Death Rally. Death Rally is a game that, uh, well, it was developed or published by 3D Realms. Apparently, it's 3D Realms Week over here, uh, and it uh, it came out in 1996, and the source code is now available on GitHub. It is they don't really give you much in the way of a readme. It's just it's D Rally. They figure it out. Uh, if you actually do a Google search for it, you can find the old website that gives you the option to download the shareware version and um, a couple of patches to fix the. Um, basically the shareware version and the fully bought CD version. And it's, yeah, I remember playing the demo of this because it came in one of like the demo CDs uh, from the PC games magazines from back in the day. I remember playing it. It's like, oh, this looks a lot like Avengers, except Avengers only came out in 1998. So it's about two years late. But yeah, it's top down isometric racing. So, so this is yeah. like um, I, I, top down Carmageddon. Yeah. I mean I mean right now you yes. can only build the the DOS exe with the make file. There's no thing that produces a Linux binary. Mm-hmm. But you know you can do all sorts of magical shit when you have access to the source code. So right. someone will get this running under Linux. Oh yes. <laughs> Indeed. Okay, we got one last little bit before we get out of here. We do. Um, maybe maybe you missed the days of having like physical handheld computers that play video games. <coughs> Smack. But instead, you can you can virtualize them with this uh, quad play console um, that is available from GitHub. Um, it is a fantasy console, effectively just trying to define like a set of standards. This is how our this is how our quote unquote game console works. You can build games for it. You can build proprietary games for it and sell them if you're so fucking inclined. At the moment though, the only way it will run is through this program. Uh, I'm curious if there's actually going to be an intention to create a physical version of this or maybe like a Raspberry Pi version of this because that would be kind of neat to have like a little Game Boy Advance SP size thing that can play games. It would be. I, d- uh, I did see the argument brought up of like, do we need another one of these? It's it's a it's a tinker toy project really. I mean, it's it's like the chip or the pie. You're not you're not doing this to like push gaming to its ultimate fucking oh, quizat tarat son. Look, at, look, look at the frames. <laughs> the frames. The frames. <laughs> oh man. Uh well, there is a reason for that cuz they actually include a bunch of the uh, the source code on their website and it is it's an interesting concept. You can play with what they have built thus far. You can play with it online. You can download it and try it for yourself. Or, yeah, you could just spin your own hardware and 
get it running. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that is pretty neat. All right, we got to bounce out of here and go play Toy uh-huh. Story from hell. Yeah, c- come, coming up next, we're playing, we're playing Superland and feeling really, really dumb about puzzles. As is what happens whenever we review a puzzle game. We all just feel like idiots. Welcome to the chair position where the accused must survive trial by Fedora Solison. Fedora. Fedora. <laughs> then, and only then, may the question be asked. This is fun. This week, we're taking a look at Superland from Super Games, developed on the Super End. No, it's the Unreal Engine 4. <laughs> uh, you can pick it up for about uh, 20 bucks to your local wet stinky currency. What is it? Superland is a first-person Metroidvania puzzle game. The main sources of inspiration are Zelda, Metroid, and Portal. Uh, I gotta thank the devs for sending us some keys over Curator Connect, although I do have to shit-talk the devs for sending us keys over Curator Connect, because that UI is terrible. Terrible, (laughs) terrible, terrible. Uh, But it's not their fault. It's Steam's fault. Get on that, Gabe. Um, Yeah, so let's let's kick into it. Ven, how'd it run? Okay. uh, Party people, let's play with this. Uh... Rocking and rolling on Fedorf, which is kind of like Fedora, but it's after I've jacked it up, so it barely runs. Anyway, uh, 1920X, that's a first-gen Threadripper, 32 gig controls of RAM, 2060, and displayed in UHD goodness. Well, I want to really bring up UHD goodness because that's pretty much your choice. You, you can play in a 1080p window. I, I think you can play in any window you want, but if you're trying to full screen the game... You can only do it in the maximum resolution of your available monitor, and the only 1080p monitor I happen to have is in portrait mode. So, neck hack, I didn't want to play that game. So I played it in 1080p window. I love that roguelike. Hey, man, it's it's kind of brilliant. Now, I know, cry me a river on my 43-inch monitor, but still, it's principle of the thing. Um, performance, Unreal Engine 4, love-hate relationship. This is more the hate relationship. Because performance, it's pretty rough. On the 2060 at 1080p, uh, kind of runs like poo. It really does. I mean, it struggles to occasionally tap 60 if you're looking at the right piece of the floor. Granted, it's a buttery smooth poo. That's not going to be a show title. Uh, something's definitely not right. Because we're definitely having in 50 at 1080 and 30s, 28 to 30 at 2160. But, you know, it is reassuring to know at least with this particular game my little 2060 NVIDIA video encoder runs roughly the same as the 1080 Ti and a regular 1080. Uh, graphics, look at it, man. I mean, this is a lot better than your average indie. A lot of love and care went into this. 100% didn't run into visual glitches. Controllers, uh, big complaint. I actually like playing this with the controllers laid back enough to where you can do that, even in the first person view. But the controller doesn't work in the menu which could be off-putting if you're like, oh, what, controller works? Yes, it does, but you just got to get in the game to get that business. So try it out. Three chairs, uh, straight up, but I can't give it a pass on the performance, man. That's a little too rough, even for me. Yep, on uh, Fedora 20, not 20, it's 30 now. Fedora 30, 64 bit with the SM6700K and the GTX 1080 Ti. It does launch, but as Ven mentioned, the performance is a bit poo if you try and play it at UHD. Um, it's a little poo if you try to play it on um, 1080 windowed, so I cranked it down to medium, and lo and behold, now it can hold about 50 to 60, depending on where you're looking. Um yeah, uh, graphics, it looks like stock Unreal Asset Toy Story, but, like, it's it's very clear that they, they put a lot of thought into the environments. Like, it looks like something that a kid threw together, and that that's what it's meant to represent, so good on you for that. Uh, Control-wise, yeah, you can you can WASD it. It's first person. Uh, the platforming sucks, but we'll get to that in the fun segment. Uh, but beyond that, yeah, aside from the, the poo-poo performance, it gets three. Yep. And uh, over here in Solus Land with the still Ryzen um, 5 1600. Come on, Amazon. Poor Give me my baby. processor. Let, hold Pedro, on. I was <laughs> hoping your... they would have delivered it by now. Let me yeah, hold no, on. We, 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 we need to trade. We need to change Pedro's adult diaper because he's getting a little cranky. <laughs> Maybe give him a bottle. Clearly. Uh, and yeah, no, it launches just fine. The performance, yeah, like Ven and Jordan already hit it. Uh, if you're playing in full screen, it's whatever your main resolution uh, on your primary monitor is. And in my case, uh, it's 3840 by 2160. And that's uh, 30 FIRPS. That's the best it can do. Uh, so if you put it down to a 1080p window, it's like, oh, I'm getting between 50 and 60. That tower can on 11. eat a glorious bag of dicks, by the way. Yeah. 
<laughs> and the graphics. It, it it's got that UE4 uh lens flare. Like it's very much there. Uh you probably saw it with the bit with the crystals earlier on in the video if you're watching the video version. Uh a, even the tiniest light source has enough bloom on it to make Orlando feel a little bit inadequate. Uh the controllers Yes, uh, the controls, the movement takes some getting used to. Well, it takes a lot of getting used to, if you're being honest. But it is manageable. And once you figure it out, it's I couldn't figure out that you could just spawn the cube on the other side of that until after the thing. So instead, you get to look at a glitch. Uh, Geometry. The, <laughs> yes. Uh, the Yeah, but it, it is ver very much a 3D platformer, but you can see your feet. Which is a nice change for once. So yeah, the the performance is the only downside to this. So three chairs. <laughs> All right. Well, there you go. It runs, but it doesn't run well. Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, was it was it was it fun though, then? Dude. All right. I, I had a very good laugh. Um, I have, Jordan put exactly two screenshots. I'll let him explain what his screenshots are in his bit, and I've taken exactly. Two screenshots. His two are in the show notes. I was like, wait a minute. Turns out, think a lot alike. That's a little terrifying. Um, sleep well knowing that. So, it's an incredibly well done puzzle sandbox. Literally a sandbox. Uh, we're talking portal level quality puzzles in this. You know, the kind that piss you off, but keep you coming back for more. Huge fan of that. Um, zero hand holding outside of like the characters. Giving you the occasional hint. There, there was one where I tooled around for like 25 minutes and I finally talked to a character he was like yo you could solve this puzzle just by doing the jeep and the chirp. I was like oh oh then I felt dumb yeah it's one of those things where you don't want to go on YouTube you don't want to cheat because you know you can solve it if you just dick around for another 10 minutes uh and that's what I did like for the first hour I was just trying to figure out what the hell to do I streamed it Friday before last and like I don't know what's going on, but I'm having a hard right time doing it. Once you get the downs of just where you should go, and like I'm trying to get this crystal, und understanding how the world works, the mechanics, it's kind of fun. Uh, plenty of places to explore, secrets to find, and there's just enough of not trying too hard humor to keep the mood light enough to keep me interested. And that's that's a difficult thing to pull off. Just in general, my only complaint for this is the combat. That shit's weak, and we both know it, Brad. We do. Um, at least you can unlock the ability to turn the baddies into ATMs, so they'll drop a bit of coin when they die, making their mild annoyance pay off. Because that's all the baddies are in this game. They're mild annoyances. And that's something Portal got right. Um, it's a puzzle game. But, you know, somebody just had to justify putting a Zelda sword in their game. So here they are. They're annoying hamster skulls. Poor guys. Uh, between that and something obviously is wrong with the performance on Linux. And the Proton version has its own special bag of issues. So I can't recommend that. I can still give it a solid three cheers for... It's fun, even at twenty bucks. I'm like I'm like six percent into this game, and like this is something I'm going to keep on my drive to play because this is well thought out and it's a brain scratcher. Much like if you enjoy Portal or Portal Two, I know it doesn't seem like it looking at it, but it's put together very meticulously, and I, I think you'll have a good time with it. So keep that in mind. Yeah. So those uh, two aforementioned screenshots. Uh, there, there, there's a. Uh... You know, Ben Ben Stone and I are both a sucker for a Breaking Bad reference or two. Lo and behold, there's a guy in a jumpsuit with a gas mask on behind, and behind him is a room full of blue mist. And he's like, "I'm not cooking anything. You can't prove it." There's blue uh, crystals yeah, in the room. And yeah, on, yep, on, 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 on them <laughs> on a stove too. That's um the uh, the the other one was once you go to like this weird cult area. <laughs> once again, beardless me makes a cameo in this game via the via the poorly drawn Jesus. And then, like, immediately behind him is the creepy child head. I'm like, this is a fucking cinematic-ass shot if it wasn't so fucking crappily did you, done. Did you, did you see Doc Brown a little after that? Yeah, okay. I, I, I did. Right. 
Yeah, there, there, there's all sorts of like little random NPC nods. Indiana there's an Indiana Jones, Jones guy. Yeah, like the <laughs> the yes. belong in a museum. Yeah, like the, it has a, it has a pretty good sense of humor. It, it 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 does enough to like like Vince said. It doesn't it doesn't try too hard. It it makes the reference. It puts it in its place, and it's one and one and done. It doesn't try to ride anything into the ground. Um, but yeah, um, but. Um, it's almost like this game like directly addresses a complaint I had from the game we threw at chairs at last week. Insofar as there's a lot of focus on exploration and dicking around and trying to find stuff. Um, and the game does have a lot going for it. It's got a big map, lots of puzzles, upgrades, secrets. It's genuinely fun to explore because as you as you unlock more and more abilities, you gain the ability. It's a Metroidvania. You can you can better traverse the area and go. Oh, cool! I didn't realize that these two pieces interact like that. Like um, the puzzle Ven brought up, where you have to shoot the box. It's like, oh, oh yeah, no, you 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 do have to do that. And That's it's, one of the things that kind of cut me off guard. Like when I was first playing that first hour was, I was like, what am I supposed to be doing? Then, then I was like, wait a minute, this is going to be yeah. one of those. And, uh, the, the, the game, the game takes a lot of inspiration from breath of the wild because like the intro area is basically like shot, like a play for play, uh, remake of breath of the wild. Insofar as it forces you to upgrade, uh, it forces you to upgrade, uh, your abilities in such an order that it teaches you the main mechanical language of the game so that when it actually releases you into the game proper, you have an idea of how everything works and how to interact with the various bits in the environment. Because that that's where a lot of this head-scratching stuff comes from, is like, oh, um, the, the game sh gives you some rules, and then you have to, like, rules lawyer your way into success. There's, there's uh, one thing where... Uh, you have to like unlock, use key cards to unlock shit, and it's like, oh, there are no red key cards here. Oh, there's a thing that changes uh, the color of other shit in place. Oh, and there's even a little achievement that pokes fun of it. it's like, yeah, that's how electronics work. Um, the one thing, but yeah, like in 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 a sandbox, teaching people how to utilize the mechanics to get around is very important. Breath of the Wild does a very good job of this, and uh, Superland follows suit. Uh, aside from the combat, yeah, which is kind of lackluster, and sometimes you just get, especially in the early game, you got like swarmed by dudes, and then you just get noped, and then the enemies will disappear, um, and, and then they'll say, reappear and we later. Like even to teaching the player, this is leaving a lot to the player. It's like you need to figure mm -hmm. this out. This is the, right, but it, it it does it in such a way where like it 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 gives you the rope and lets you hang yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, the 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 big thing here, the com the combat I can deal with it because like whatever, it's it's a filler thing. It extends the length of the game. But the platforming is super fucking crappy. Now, it's not necessarily a fault to Superland. 3D or 3D first person platforming sucks. No one no one has been ever able to get it right, and these guys aren't any exception. Um everything else is very very solid though. It's very fun. There's lots to explore. That's a good sense of humor. Um and it's 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 not like fuck you hard, but it's not pushover easy either. It gives you a good amount of challenge, and meter does it out fairly regularly. Uh, so minus the whole performance thing at full screen, got to give it three chairs for fun. Yeah, and you know when devs go out of their way to list all of their inspirations in the little blurb in the uh, Steam Store page, I something inside me feels the need to pick at the nits and. Well, I went in, it's like, okay, so you take inspiration from Zelda, and you take inspiration from Metroid, and you take inspiration from Portal, so I'm going to give you shit over it. Uh, but then, I started to play it, it's like, oh, the map is laid out a lot like Zelda, and there's a lot of Metroidvania-style mechanics going on here. And I want to point puzzles... out the map design right there, where you fucking fell. I remember falling right there going, yep. motherfucker, <laughs> this is... Smart enough <laughs> to know that you're going mother. Oh, here's the bouncy pad. Get back up there. Yeah, yep. they, 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 have, they have the they have the switches. Well, that, and that was the thing. Like you start looking for the switches after a while too. You're like, I've done yeah. a lot of complex <laughs> fuckery, so th they're good enough to give you a shortcut afterwards, so you don't have to go through that entire shit again. Yeah, and it, that is uh, actually something that is worth pointing out because the devs nailed the freaking level design and the puzzles. Yes, uh, it, they are very similar to Portal without actually having portals involved because they re uh, some of them require a lot of lateral thinking. It's like, okay, I have all of these abilities. None of them is specifically designed for this uh, 
specific bit of the map. However, if I do this and I try to put this... Uh, there it goes. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, no, the puzzles are really well done. And the platforming, yeah, it's bad. But I've seen 3D platformers where you can't see your feet. So, yeah. This bit right here is where I figured out, yeah, if I keep the camera down, I can see where I'm landing. So, there, yeah, there, it's... There, there's a couple situations, though, where that doesn't really work out because looking down fucks with, your accelera with the acceleration of the jump, and you yes. just can't. And uh, <laughs> it, does the U it does the UE4 thing where, like, you'll fucking super ball off of a corner or something if you land on something wrong. And that it does that because if you're looking down, you're not rendering as much. Your frame rate jumps, and the game speed increases a little bit. So it fucks with your brain, and it sends you flying. Uh, See, yeah. this is why Even I played the... most of the time with my eyes closed. <laughs> it's the only way life hack the only way yeah even if uh even the moment you get like the gun mcguffin that's what they call it uh it looks the... very similar to uh seamus aaron's blaster or uh the arm seamus cannon. yes the, every, everyone's favorite irish metroid hunter seamus seamus McAaron, Aaron, yeah. Samus, yeah. whatever uh <laughs> sharon uh but yeah sharon Metro um, Metroidvania, you know, uh, main character, uh, yeah, whatever. Uh, Seamus, the yeah. Superland uh, is a first-person Metroidvania, and as I was playing it, it's like, why wasn't this done before? But it it very much wears its inspirations on its sleeve, and it's a good thing. You can see, like, all of the uh, pop culture characters uh, and all the references you see all of that, you recognize all of that, but they're just references. They're completely inoffensive. They don't really affect the game in any way. And that's awesome. I really like the game and what it does because of it. I fucked so, up and I solved this puzzle by accident, by the way. Yeah, I no, absolutely... it took me a while to realize. It's like, wait a second. <laughs> uh, I was like, but, is, there, is, there a is there a puzzle here? Because I put a block on that button without even thinking about it. And then everything. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, it's like you put a block on the button and then you go there. You put a, the block there and the thing falls on the block. It took me a yeah. while to figure that out. Well, once, I, but, I think ultimately, once you get into the mind of the puzzle creator... Yeah, we yeah. flow with it a lot smoother. <laughs> that that's the lateral thinking that the game asks you to do, and this is one of those games that you lose track of time as you're playing it. So if it weren't for the performance issues, it'd get four chairs, so it gets three. All right, well there you go. It's a decently fun game. Performance issues yep. aside, it's I honestly I really hope the devs patch this so that it doesn't perform like butt. That would be uh, nice. I, I'd be welcome to that. Uh, Superland 2 is currently been funded on Kickstarter. Okay. So, nice. all right. So, ho hopefully, hopefully they can figure figure out the alchemy that made this so good, and then improve upon it. Because mm -hmm. that's kind of that's the tricky bit with a lot of sequels. Is Indeed. Yeah. You, you gotta you gotta you gotta improve upon it. Without I think this would work really well on the like Nintendo Switch. Oh, absolutely, one hundred percent. Oh yeah, uh, mm -hmm. as, 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 yeah, especially with like the FPS motion controls on the Switch, mm -hmm. very very handy. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind having this on the Switch. Would be interested to see. Yeah, indeed. All right, coming up next, we got some hate mail for the lovely, lovely people from the lovely, lovely people by the and... lovely, lovely people. Yep. You don't need to hide your mayo. You don't need to hide your cousins. If there was ever a more uh, incriminatory... It, like, hide your kids, hide your mayo. What? Where'd my mayo go? <laughs> God damn it. Cousin, no, get over was, here. Fair warning. If there was ever a really, really uh, damning uh, intermission from Linux Gamecast Live... That was it. So if you'd like to let us know exactly how you feel about your cousins, go on and go to LinuxGameCast.com and hit the contact button. It's By like all means, don't, advice. <laughs> don't write us about your cousins, or if you do, select, yeah, relationship advice, and uh, Jordan will be happy to, um, I don't know, answer your question. Let's go with that. Uh, so yeah, if you're a game developer, the only thing that you need to keep in mind is that you need to send us three Steam keys or a copy that we can share amongst all of us. Does that sound good? Good. Horrible. So, no? Well, uh, well this week, 
Yeah, uh, Troy. Had... Troy. Uh, Troy who, who, may, who, who may or may not be Randy Martin. I don't know, but <laughs> say, hey, hey, guys, any reason you don't put a link or at least the web address of your site in the description of your podcast would have eliminated the need for me to type this. Whatever's cool work you're doing. You're all doing and follow you all. But hey, a link and desk may make it easier for someone trying to trying the podcast. End of thought. Love, Troy. This was a YouTube comment. Yeah. Mm mm. No, 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 this, yeah. Wait, so, so, so they, 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 they were, they were sending us an email from our site asking us how to get to That's the why site. they said they wouldn't have had to have sent the hate mail. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, <laughs> I researched, I consulted with the chairs and uh, also WordPress. Um, apparently we could add links to the, I will say you're the first person in the history of ever to request that. Is is that something I I checked the like podcasts I listened to it didn't is that a thing people do is that what the cool kids are doing now wait uh, I, I when when I, I thought I thought we did have the link to our website in our YouTube description no no this is podcast read the oh, fucking no email. this is the podcast uh, uh, podcast podcast it's, it's the thing you put on your in your podcatcher in your pod device which has pods Kubernetes it's like yeah. If if we're talking about like the the podcast RSS feed and you just fit it into whatever podcatcher you happen to be using, you're not even going to see descriptions. You're just going to listen to whatever happens to come down the pipe. What are you that, talking about? I can show descriptions in the RSS feed. No one reads those. Uh, at least I thought no one read those. <laughs> no, Pedro's like everyone's like me. I ignore all information about a show. I Pretty like, much, I like to, yeah. I like because if I blind. have podcasts going, I'm not reading whatever the fuck is showing up on screen. I just it's like, oh, new thing, Time cool. Thoughts. <laughs> well, you know, see, I'm 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 one of those weirdos who actually like listens to podcasts on YouTube. I'm like the one person. <laughs> no, a lot of people do. I mean, a lot. I'm I'm sure the people who pay attention to our YouTube videos like minimize the right play. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> that's a very small minority. Apparently, we are easy enough to find if you type in Linux game cast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you, get, you get sent to that other website. Um. <laughs> Hot. Uh, it's kind of brilliant. Hey, that's something we can look into. Maybe I can sneak a URL into the um, show description. We'll, we'll, we'll see. How Cleverly disguised under linuxgamecast.com. I can do hyperlinks. That's what I checked. I was like, I can put a hyperlink because I don't want to put it. It's the way the uh, web RSS stuff. Don't want to deal with it. It's automated and I want to poke it with a stick. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, Streets of Help. We might have mentioned something last week about a particular game that, uh, well, you know, what's, oh, didn't work on Linux very well. <laughs> so we get a note from Mad Guy 90. He's like, yo, Streets of Ray Rogue developer dude here, period. I get the impression that the issue that you encountered, which is a blue screen, which it launches to, which you have to go and edit a file, or you can do a launch option uh, from Steam, which, you know, three or four clicks into the forums, you will find that page that tells you to do that, to be something that you're familiar with. Uh, yeah, we're familiar with Unity Games on mm -hmm. Linux. Uh, uh, if this is a common issue and you have any suggestions based on ways other than developers have handled this, I'd like to hear them. Feel free to shoot me an email. Uh, We've decided to use it as part of entertainment for the listening audience. I would say, Pedro, how would you go about launching this game in windowed mode initially? Was it, uh, could there possibly well, <laughs> be multiple ways to do that? Uh, there are multiple oh. ways to do it. Um, it's I I don't actually know if the uh, dash starts dash screen dash selector flag works in this particular game because you can disable it according to what Scott was saying in the pre pre super chosen. Mm -hmm. But uh, the reliable way to do it is you go to dot uh, your home dot config Unity three D Streets of Rogue and you find the prefs files. Uh, you change the full screen line to from uh, one to zero, and yeah, the game uh, then starts just fine. And to the developer's comment there, all you need to do is not start your game full screen and attempt to use the default Unity thing to figure out people's resolution. Mm. Yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> another thing you could do would be frowned upon but at least it would work for everyone is you could put up the unity scream of nope 
It'll cost yeah, you a share. It on the will share be very but... frowned upon. <laughs> yeah, well, it, that would cost you less shares than blue screen. Yeah, <laughs> because I, here's what I was talking about the previous super shows, and we save saved you a Google search. Um, is like figuring this out. Normally, I, I mean, I'm just saying, like us, yeah, that challenge accepted, right? You launch a game and it doesn't yeah. start. You're like, all right, I got something to do. Uh, and you go through the forums and digging through. It's like, why does this start? Oh, I got to do a fly. Okay, maybe I can try this. Or I can try, there's a couple alternate methods. And anybody outside of that mentality is like, tapping that refund button, fam. Mm -hmm. Just say it. Seem well for us refunds now. It's a really good <laughs> game. So also, update your Unity engine. I know that might be hard to do. <laughs> Looking forward to playing it. Maybe next week. Hmm? Maybe. Yeah. Actually, when's the uh, when's the twenty fifth? It's already out. We're doing... No, no, I was I was I was gonna say uh, what do you call it? The review embargo for um, Fantasy Strike is done on the twenty fifth. Oh, Snapple Jacks! All right, ladies yeah. and gentlemen, boys and girls, on that uh, fantasy bombshell, let's do the music. You can always find us around eight thirty Eastern Standard Time. That's right, preamp. Don't you fucking die? Even though you we were cheap, and I could replace you. That's right. I can replace you. Huh, you better still work. Um, you could always find me at Vincent on Twitter. I'm there screaming weird things. And uh, I have a personal Mastodon account. My Twitter account's kind of like a Linux Gamecast account for whatever reason, because we never expect anybody to actually listen to the show. Uh, Mast.LinuxGamecast.com. I'm there. I'm Old Man Vin. You can find me. And I post weird things that apparently need clarification more often than not. I am your fantasy man, Jordan Swung. You can find me in another world on Twitter at the Burning Fool or mass.linuxgamecast.com. I'm at Frojo. Fantasy. Wow. Sexy diaper man. And you can find me uh, drinking unhealthy amounts of booze. Monday morning. At unaccounted at for on Twitter or, you know, right here, right now. Uh, I am Peter Mateus. So, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I probably did something to offend someone today, so hey, Echo, I'm your sorry. cousins for sure. Me a your cousins for sure. <laughs> God damn it, you guys! <laughs> it's my bath water, by the way. It's not either of these two's. It's more like tea. It's more like soup. It's not really gravy, really. It's, it, I mean, it's it's more like stew. It has that level of thickness to it. With, with some gravy, <laughs> I mean, it's got that consistency. So powerful. Look at our Theron and Mr. Foxdog and Empty atomic. and the Atomic Ass, Mike, Mike G, and Barber and Drummer and Aldeus. Haplo. Haplo and Mackie. Hey, man. I want to thank Mike. You, you didn't make fun of my black shirt tonight. Good on you. Yeah, got, look, look at oh, all those shit. lovely producers. What about Razmatawama? Uh, <laughs> Razmawata? Ifro? Jolly? Tapical? Luke Melangston Brad Melangston C <laughs> Nicole Calvin Nibbles Basil O'Dung Adam Sorceress Adam. and Jake Nog <laughs> oh, look, look, look at look at those fucky fuckos. Oh, oh my G my G running away with the fuckos. Hey man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they're all cute. Okay? Oh my god. <laughs> Maddie, Linux Neuro, Truggy, Aldius, Arthur, and Bradley, Jill and Steve. If you want to be on this list, the Admiral get us some shit off our wish list. Wish list. No. Yeah. Ryan and Actually, is there anything heavy on there? No, I don't think there's anything heavy on there right now, so I'm safe. No. We'll put an anvil on there just in case. Wonderful, wonderful fuckos. That's no moon. That's a Linux Gamecast. Died if I ever want. We'll see you next week. Bye. Five dudes. <laughs>